Hello and welcome. I'd like to do today a short practice that's leading to pranayama. It has elements in common with um, the practice I recently uploaded, except it's uh, um, not going so far into asanas per se. It's more just basic movements, and then we'll talk more about pranayama and, and give more emphasis to pranayama, although like I said, there's similar elements. I just wanted to make a video more specifically geared towards pranayama because I don't wish to uh, give the impression that um, an imbalanced practice that is uh, solely asana heavy. In fact, that is why I uh, did make time to sit for pranayama at the uh, end of that last practice as well. That's very important. It's the way my teacher uh, teaches that we, we uh, must end practice of asanas with pranayama and this is ultimately uh, meant to lead towards the practice of meditation. So for today we'll just uh, focus on pranayama and in a subsequent, um, this is a, so it's an introductory practice for pranayama specifically um, and then uh, in the future I'll upload uh, another such short a practice video which is again geared more towards meditation itself so of course there will be some breathing and movement there will be some pranayama but also making time for an introduction to the subject of meditation as part of this this process that is the project of yoga okay so for today we're going to focus more on pranayama and uh, I'll outline um, some of the basics of Vinyasa Krama system, but uh, if you want more detail, you of course should uh, check out the previous uh, uh, practice video, which dealt more with breath and movement and uh, asana practice proper as such, which then did allow for a short time for pranayama, siddhi pranayama at the end. We started with breathing to uh, integrate at the beginning as well and we'll start with this as well today. So I'll start with this invocation to the sage Patanjali who authored the Yoga Sutra, uh, a text that is about yoga for the mind, for cultivating a mental state in the meditation process and it has all of these uh, preliminary um, practices of the asanas starting with uh, certain social dis disciplines and personal observances called yama niyama. There's the practice of asana, of course, and then there's pranayama. These are thought to be external in nature, leading to the internal uh, practices. Pratyahara is the indrawing of the senses. And then there's the internal practices, uh, the process of meditation, in any case, today, like I said, we're focusing on pranayama, and I'll start with this invocation to the sage Patanjali. Om aindu karatane ane mohatane indini lampere pondre etrane nandi mahandane jnana kurundane pondi vaita di putru enrene yastyakva rupa madhyam prabhavadi jagato nekada nugrahaya Prakshina klesha rashra vishama vishadaro ne kavakra subhogi sarva jnana prasutir busha kaparikara priteye yasyanityam nevo hisha savo vyatsita vimalatanur yoga do yoga yuktaha yoga na chetasya padena vacha malam sharira sya chavayakena Yopa karotam pravaram muninam patanjalim pranjari ranatosmi abahu purushakaram shanka chakrasidharinam sahasra shirasam shwetam pranamami patanjalim shrimate anantaya nagarajaya namo namaha asmadachari bhyasare bhyo namo namaha All right, thanks for joining. So we'll start in a seated 
uh, no, actually, yeah, we'll start lying down to start, like I started the, the previous practice, actually, just to outline some basics as we connect to the breath in an introductory way. So you can do this, of course, uh, lying on your bed. You can also do the seated portion, sitting at the edge of your bed, sitting on the chair. So no need to come to the ground if this uh, creates unease, if it uh, brings discomfort, if it's uncomfortable to sit on the floor, to come to the ground at all. You can do this at your bed. Uh, in any case, we'll come to lie on our back. And we can keep the knees bent with the feet on the floor. Just close your eyes. Relax. And watch your breath. Now place both of your palms gently on your abdomen. Continue to watch your breath now with this tactile feedback of the hands on the abdomen. Sensing the movement of the diaphragm. That's intrinsically, intrinsically related to the breathing process. Focus on your exhalation here, primarily. So here initially we're using the tactile feedback of the hands to this point of attention, the point of focus. Later on we can bring focus to different parts without necessarily using the hands at that part, just bringing the attention internally as such. But for now, let's use the hands. It's thought that our prana is otherwise outwardly dissipating, primarily through the sense organs, through the openings in the body. But when we direct the attention, to something internally, a sensation internally, it's focusing the prana. So to direct the internal sensations related to the felt sensations within the body, to direct the prana. Again, mental attention is linked with the breath. Breath is linked to the subtle energy known as prana. And ultimately yoga is having to do with cultivating a mental state over time, sharpening the intellect, developing the faculties toward the capacity at attaining to the eventual goal of such an elevated mental state. Keep focusing on the exhalation here. Just free flow, normal breath.
Now place both palms on your chest and watch the movements of the breath. Now with the hands at the chest. Now pay particular attention to the inhale. Watch how the inhale brings a subtle expansion to the chest. And now place one hand at the abdomen, one hand on the chest, and try to watch both the inhale with the expansion in the chest and the exhale with the contraction in the abdomen. We start with the exhale because to be able to uh, take a full, complete exhalation creates more space to take a full, deep inhalation. Now you can start to see about comfortably bringing the breath under control. It should be comfortably so. It should not induce panic in trying to regulate or control the breath, but just gently coaxing it in the direction of elongating primarily your exhale to begin. Bring a slight constriction at the pit of the throat as well creating a gentle hissing sound with a rubbing sensation in the pit of the throat. It's a bit like whispering. If you try this on exhale, but then continue to create the sound with the lips sealed. So focus on that exhale, begin to lengthen the exhale. So you might See that maybe your exhale is two seconds, naturally three seconds. Now see about lengthening your exhale. Slow down the velocity with which your abdomen contracts and the air is expelled from three seconds. So maybe four seconds. And then try even lengthening to a five second exhale. With this ujjayi breathing, the sensation, the rubbing sensation in the throat. Again, we're talking about sensations in the body. Try to get a five second exhale. And with five second exhale, maybe you can lengthen your inhale comfortably so to match it. Maybe naturally it's a two second inhale. See about extending your inhale to three seconds. With the exhale, maybe a four second inhale. 
and the exhale. Maybe even a five second inhale. And a five second exhale. Keep breathing like this with Ujjayi breathing. You can even take your hands down to the floor by your sides, palms face down. And just continue this Ujjayi breathing without necessarily the hands touching the, the trunk, the abdomen and chest, just hands on the floor now. So here, equal breathing, some of Ritti, equal inhale to equal exhale, five seconds inhale and five seconds exhale. Now you can relax the breathing, come to the body. And when you're ready, you can turn to your right side and slowly, eventually coming up to a seated position. Don't be in a hurry. Just go easily, steadily. And I'll come to a seated position. You could take a simple cross leg position. And here you might assess that you, you can't sit with the spine erect, you start to roll back. Uh, maybe your, your knees are even high. So you can always sit up on a height, you can sit on a cushion, a yoga block. You can double up the cushions. If you're sitting at the edge of your bed or on a chair, you can always do that too. So maybe sitting up higher, you'll notice if your knees were high to begin with, maybe they start to come down at the same level as your, your navel, right? If they're higher than your navel, there might be too, too much tension. So sitting up higher can be helpful to keep your knees at the level of your navel at least. And you can lift your spine more probably instead of like rolling back, not able to sit erect especially when you stretch your legs out in front you might feel your spine rolling back without the support of sitting higher maybe even without the support of bending the knees you want to be able to lift your spine erect so now take your legs in a cross leg position again if you're sitting on the chair or on your bed with your feet on the floor you, you can take that and sit comfortably with an erect spine. So now we'll start to combine movement of the arms with the inhalation and exhalation. You can do this with the, your eyes closed since you're sitting and you don't have uh, as much trouble with balance or you can have the eyes open. Now, inhale and slowly take your arms out to the sides and up. Remember, it's a five second inhale. And interlace the fingers, stretching up. And then exhale, slowly lower your arms down by your sides. Breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out. You can even have your chin gently lowered as your chest is well open. Inhale, slowly. Raise your arms up with the rubbing sensation in the throat. Lift your waist, lift your spine, and exhale. Slowly lower your arms.
Inhale, slowly take your arms up. Now let's keep the arm position as you breathe out. Exhale, watch your navel draw towards the spine. So here the arms are up, but the chin is lowered. Stretch the spine up. Exhaling there. One more breath like this. Exhale, slowly lower your arms, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out. So don't throw away any of the movements. Pay attention from the beginning of the movement all the way until the end of the movement. So enjoy the, the breath through the di dynamic movement. The next is another type of arm position. We'll raise the arms like we've done and interlace the fingers. And I'll just demonstrate. And then on exhale, what we'll do is bend the elbows, taking the hands behind the head. If you didn't see the last practice video, you'll have to see what I'm doing here. So with the bending of the elbows, slowly, this is with intention, very deliberate and mindful, taking the hands behind the head, palms facing up. So not, fa not cupping the head, but actually facing up, which you can help move the elbows back to plug the shoulder blades into the back ribs. This opens up the chest. And on inhale, we'll straighten the arms. So let's try this together. We'll do this in a dynamic fashion. Really appreciate the breath through these dynamic movements. So inhale, slowly take your arms out to the sides and up. Again, the chin is lowered. Don't raise the head. At least not in this tradition. Usually we keep the head down when the arms raise. So exhale now, bend the elbows. Take the hands behind the head, palms facing up. Move the elbows back to plug the shoulder blades in, open up the chest and inhale to straighten the arms. Exhale, slowly bend the elbows, hands behind the head, palms facing up, move the elbows back. Inhale, slowly straighten your arms, palms up. Last time, exhale, slowly bend the elbows, hands behind the head. Now keep this arm position, breathe in, move your elbows back, plug the shoulder blades into the back ribs, open up the chest, exhale there. Another couple of breaths like this. Really appreciate the expansion of the chest with this arm position, this Hasta Vinyasa. Exhaling there. Again, breathe in. Get a good stretch inside out. The chest lifts, the chin touches the lifted chest. Exhale there. Now, inhale slowly. Straighten your arms. Press the palms up. Exhale, slowly lower your arms down. Okay. Good. So that was a movement that's helping the, uh, the thoracic cavity, the, the lungs. Let's look at the exhale-oriented movement. We'll come to lie on our back again. And we'll do what is known in this tradition as apanasana. So come to lie on your back. So here we'll do the simple way where we have the knees bent, the feet on the floor. So what we'll do is we'll take one knee at a time and we'll do where we keep the hand, the hands, the two hands to the, the knee on inhale and then we'll take a subsequent exhale again taking the knee closer to the chest and then we'll release the knee on the falling inhale taking the hands overhead and the foot to the floor in this position the starting position 
and then we'll proceed to the left knee. So with an inhale, slowly take both arms overhead. And now exhale, carefully take the right foot off of the floor and take the knee to the chest. Take the hands to the knee. So the elbows bend as the knee comes close to the chest. And then inhale, stay holding the knee and straighten the elbows, move the knee away from the, the chest. Straighten the spine. Exhale, draw the belly in. Take the knee to the chest, bend the elbows. And then inhale, let go of the knee, place the foot to the floor, take the arms overhead. Now the other side, exhale, slowly take the left knee to the chest, the foot leaves the floor, the hands come to the knee. Now still holding the knee with an inhale, straighten the elbows, straighten the spine as the knee moves away. And then exhale, bend the knee to the chest, draw the belly in, the elbows bend. Focus on the exhale. And now inhale, release the knee, slowly take, it, take the foot to the floor, arms overhead. And now exhale, slowly take your arms down. Again, don't throw away any of the movements, still keeping attention of the movement through the breath. Good, relax. So that's one round. Let's try the same thing now with both knees. So with an inhale, first taking both arms overhead. Exhale, slowly take the knees to the chest, hands to the knees, so the feet coming off of the floor, ideally at the same time with control. And now inhale, still holding the knees, straighten the elbows, straighten the spine, the knees move away. And then exhale, slowly take the knees closer to the chest, bending the elbows. And then inhale, Release the knees, place the feet to the floor, arms over her head, touching down at the same time, ideally. And then exhale, you can lower your arms down. Good, relax for a moment. So now, what we'll do is the same entry, but this time we'll keep the hands to the knees for a few rounds of breath. We'll stay in the pose, and we can do the same thing where we uh, loosen the grip a bit, allow the knees to move away on inhale, and with the exhale, the knees naturally come in. So we'll stay in the pose for a few breaths. So inhale, first take your arms overhead. And then exhale, feet come off of the floor, ideally at the same time, and exhaling, taking the knees to the chest, hands to the knees. Stay with inhale, you can loosen the grip on inhale. Exhale, take the knees to the chest, deep in the pose, use the exhalation, draw the belly in. So here the eyes could be closed, You're, you don't need the eyes balance now. Go internally, focus on the exhale and the abdomen contracting. So for the exhale oriented postures like this one, you may notice that the exhale naturally can be longer than the inhale. So now we can get into unequal breathing, unequal ratio. So it's known as vishama vritti, the exhale being longer than the inhale. This naturally occurs in a state of pacification to the nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system associated with the rest and digest. So 
if we're going to have unequal breathing, we'll have the exhale that's longer than the inhale. The inhale will always be equal to or less than the exhale. Or the exhale can be equal to or longer than the exhale, not shorter than the inhale. So here, see about even extending your exhale even further, which has that pacifying quality to the nervous system. And now with the eyes closed, you can even bring this uh, Brahmari pranayama technique, which is making a humming sound on exhale, using the sound to help extend your exhale. You may notice you can get longer in your exhale through this tool. Brahmari is meant to mimic the buzzing of a bumblebee, and that's what we're doing as we hum. So when you're ready, you can do this on your each exhale. Mm. See about extending. See if you can extend little by little each breath, longer exhale. Should be comfortable. The breath should be getting longer, but still with this quality of being smooth. If it's jagged, you're forcing. So maybe going beyond your capacity. So be sensitive to this. This kind of practice asks for sensitivity. Use the attention on the bodily sensations. Mm. No forcing. You can see about extending the exhale, approaching even twice as long the length of the inhale. Mm. If it's not uh, comfortably uh, reaching twice as long in length of the inhale, no worries, you don't have to do exactly twice as long. It should, it should not be uncomfortable, so choose a count that makes sense for you. Don't use your ego in extending the count. It should be comfortable, be sensitive to this. Now you can release this, place the feet on the floor. And then when you're ready, you can turn to your right side, slowly coming up to a seated position. And again, taking a comfortable seated position. If you're sitting in a cross leg position, if you're Roll, spine is rolling back if your knees are high. Again, you can always take a height, sit on a cushion, sit on two cushions or blankets, or you can sit on a 
yoga brick. In the case, sit tall. Again, you can also be sitting on a chair or the edge of your bed. The spine is erect. The shoulders roll back. The back of the neck is long. The chin gently lowered towards the lifted chest. So now, let's again control the breath with Ujjayi breathing, but just without any movement now. You can just focus on the sensation in the throat and focus on comfortably lengthening the breathing, starting with the exhale. Could be five second inhale, five second exhale. So here, eyes closed, watch your breath. Now you can relax the breathing. Go back to normal breath. No control, but keep watch of your breath. So next we'll do is controlling the breath in the nostrils on exhale. This helps to make the exhale itself subtle and as such is pacifying because we're emphasizing the exhale. And through this technique, we can also lengthen the exhale, which is also pacifying. So this technique is known as Anuloma Ujjayi. It's a hybrid technique in which we utilize Ujjayi with both nostrils on inhale, as we've been doing. And then on exhale, no more throat constriction, but rather we'll close one nostril and breathe out through the, the opposite nostril, through uh, partially closing of that nostril if possible. And we'll inhale through both nostrils with the th throat constriction, ujjayi. And then we'll exhale without the throat constriction, but through the opposite nostril, closing the previously open nostril and exhaling through the, that opposite nostril. So th there's a mudra that we take in the right hand. I come closer to show. It's known as Mrigi Mudra in this uh, tradition. Some people call it. Vishnu Mudra or Shankar Mudra. So you essentially bend the index finger and middle finger in the right hand. Some people rather do pranayama like this with the two fingers like that and closing the, the left side or the right side with the fingers, the index and middle finger straight pointed towards the forehead. But in this tradition, we actually bend the index and middle fingers. Known as Mrigi Mudra because it's meant to look like a shadow puppet of a deer, the antlers, okay? And also, anuloma implies with the grain. Loma means grain, anu means with, following the grain. So in that, it's a hybrid technique because anuloma ujjayi has the ujjayi on the inhale. And on the exhale is when we uh, close one nostril and, and breathe through this alternate nostril technique. On exhale, because the air is flowing out with the grain, again, it's pacifying in that sense. 
So sitting tall, again, again, if you need uh, to sit on a height, to sit comfortably with an erect spine, please do so. Take whatever you need. The chin lowered, the eyes closed, and exhale completely to empty your lungs. Now inhale through both nostrils with Ujjayi. And then exhale through the right nostril. Let's try to equal exhale. So right nostril. Then inhale both nostrils. You can lower your hand. Ujjayi in the throat for the inhale. And then exhale, left nostril, closing the right, breathe out through the left. You can partially close the left, make the exhale subtle, five seconds. That's one round. So inhale now, Ujjayi, both nostrils. And then exhale, right nostril. See about extending the exhale, maybe six seconds now. Then inhale both nostrils, Ujjayi. You can lower the hand. And then exhale, left nostril. So you maybe about six second exhale. And inhale both nostrils, Ujjayi. Exhale, right nostril. See so about seven second exhale. Then inhale both nostrils, Ujjayi. Exhale, well, uh, left nostril, seven seconds. Then inhale both nostrils, Ujjayi. Exhale, right nostril, see about extending to eight second exhale. Then inhale through both nostrils, Ujjayi. Exhale, left nostril, eight seconds. Then inhale both nostrils, Ujjayi. And only if it's comfortable, now exhale right nostril, see about nine second exhale. If it's not comfortable, you can stick with eight seconds. Then inhale both nostrils, Ujjayi. Exhale left nostril, again nine seconds if it's comfortable. Then inhale both nostrils, Ujjayi. Exhale, right nostril. See, maybe about 10 seconds if it's comfortable. So that's twice as long if you can get to 10 seconds. Inhale, Ujjayi, both nostrils. Exhale, left nostril, see about 10 seconds, otherwise approaching twice as long as the inhale. Then relax the breathing, go back to normal breathing. Just take a moment, assess the effect of the pranayama, assessing your sensations, be sensitive. Take note if you are straining, take note of which count may be more appropriate to you.
and watch your breath now, just in normal breathing. So eventually there's the possibility of working on the subtlety of the inhale itself after developing our exhale. And after that, we can explore kumbhaka if it's appropriate to the individual. Kumbhaka is the breath holding. It may not be appropriate to every individual, so it's a, it takes care uh, in, in exploring such techniques. For now, we're just going uh, cautiously and safely without use of kumbhaka or breath retention, breath holding. Maybe in subsequent uh, explorations, we'll develop the inhale and then maybe uh, carefully working with the breath hold in a sensible manner. So with that, I'd like to conclude the practice we could chant Om together once. Om is thought to be the cosmic sound, the primordial throb of the universe. If you don't feel comfortable chanting Om, you could just uh, hum like the Brahmari buzzing of bumblebee humming technique, or you could say any other sound you're comfortable with. Could even be the the sound Amen, which is also thought to be an auspicious auspicious sound, like like the monosyllable of Om. So whatever you're comfortable taking, take a deep inhalation. Thanks for joining for today's uh, introductory exploration into pranayama and hope you enjoyed and please stick around for any updates and videos to this channel any uh, practices I'll also to follow up with subsequent practices if you would like if you have any interest you can send me any questions and uh, with that, thank you again, and until next time.